The old belt. It's been used since the beginning of mankind. Holding our pants up, maybe keeping our robe together, our loincloth on. Uh, you know, the belt is something that has been with us forever. Uh, especially the leather belt, specifically. We're going to take a look today at the belt and its many uses in a survival situation. Not only holding your pants up, uh, but also for other uses. And you know, a lot of times it's around our waist. We're not really thinking about our belt and that we could use this in multiple situations. And so we're going to check it out using everyday items uh, for survival uses. Now there are a ton of different type belts. Um, you know, for survival, a lot of people are looking at paracord belts, and, you know, multiple uses. There are your standard cloth belts and there are tactical belts. And in fact, there's a lot that are not quite as uh, substantial as something like this. And this is not something though that I use every day. And what I want is a good leather belt. It's just my preference. You know, you have to go with whatever your preference is. Most of the things that I'm going to talk about, though, can be used with any type belt. Uh, but specifically, the leather belt, to me, uh, it's just comfortable. It looks nice. It doesn't necessarily look tactical, which I really kind of like that, looking a little more gray man. Uh, but there's a ton of different colors. There's a ton of different styles. Now, one of the things that I'm going to, this is my favorite belt right here. And you can see out of all these belts, this one is, is pretty rough. Uh, it is a DowTechForce.com bull leather belt. Uh, I've had this belt for about seven years. And I'll tell you what, I just keep wearing it because it's so comfortable, it fits, but yet it's bull leather and it's really great uh, for concealed carry. And that's one of the things I do. But, you know, whether you're concealed carrying or not, this is the platform around your waist. Yes, it holds your pants up, but it also takes care of a lot of things. Now, there's a lot of different colors, and that's why I have a number of belts. Uh, many of them I use for dress. I don't necessarily, of course, use this one if I'm going out to dinner. Uh, but there's also thicker belts, and here's a big thick. This is also bull leather. All these, actually, that are on this table are bull leather belts except for this one. This is a really fancy belt. Uh, I got this from Diamond D Custom Leather, great company, uh, but it has the stitching here. And this is a little more fancy, but it still can be used in the same way. Uh, having a good buckle system. Here we have the brass buckles. It makes it really nice. You can, in fact, because of these Chicago screws, you can actually take this off and put a D-ring in connection with your buckle. Or you can put a different type buckle on there, uh, you know, to fit whatever you might need. Uh, here is a much thicker belt, though, and, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder to get an, into your uh, belt loops. Here we have one with a card inside uh, to help give it retention. And this, of course, is more specifically for concealed carry. And this is one in particular that I really like, and it has a hidden compartment uh, to stash money and other things. In fact, I'm going to do a full review on this as a survival belt in itself a little bit later. This is also a Daltec Force belt. Uh, I'm going to have all the links to Daltec Force and to Diamond D Custom Leather, but I'll tell you, the Daltec Force belts, I've been using them, like again, for many years, and they're just fantastic belts. The bull leather just has a little more rigidity than your standard uh, cow leather or rawhide. Of course for my concealed carry I like to have an inside the waistband holster. Of course I can carry it appendix carry or I can go back here to the five o'clock. One of the things I will just recommend is not wearing it in the small of your back. It can damage your back if you fall. Plus it's a little bit more difficult to get to. But this is important because of this plat. This is your platform and it holds your gun into place. When you're pulling the gun out it retains the holster and if you don't have a decent holster, that could be a problem. This also definitely goes with outside the waistband as well. Retaining that holster into place and, of course, tightening your build up where you need to. This platform is important. Now, one cue we can take from law enforcement is a belt used to carry multiple items. Maybe you're carrying a fixed blade knife, an extra magazine, flashlight, whatever essentials you need. Maybe the pack's just too much for you to carry. In a situation so here we've got everything around so you know taking that cue from law enforcement I mean this the way these guys move it gives you a little more agility uh, it's a little bit less cumbersome in the rule of threes water comes in at three days you can survive without water having a way to carry your water now there's a ton of different methods and even better methods than this old military canteen but if this is what you've got with the old Alice clips you can still attach it to your belt a lot of different packs have molly attachments just like this. These are pretty thin, but your belt can still go through it. And now you have a way to carry your pack right on your belt. And of course, this is to improvise. 
if you have no other way. Maybe in my pack, I just can't carry my pack. It's just too much. I can pull this out of my pack, which has all my survival needs in here, and just be able to attach it to my belt. It gives me both hands free. Considering a crisis can happen at any time, and it usually does when you're least prepared. Maybe you have just a small bag in your vehicle and you need to carry something. Uh, of course, with this hot weather, we might not carry a coat. It may be a bedroll, it could be a tarp, it could be a lot of things. This is gonna be very difficult to carry if you've already got your pack full, especially if it's warm. Take whatever article it is and just start rolling it up. Nice tight bundle. Take your belt, loop it through. You know, in an emergency situation as well, you may need to add holes to your belt. And you know, you can always buy another belt if you need to, if it's gonna save your life. Here we've got this contained. Take the existing strap, and typically these are adjustable, so you can kind of adjust it however you want to. And at least you can carry it with hands free. So while this isn't optimum, it definitely gives me the ability to travel and I've got everything I need with me. Of course, if you're traveling with food, you know you need to get that food off the ground so certain critters can't get a hold of it. Find an attachment point, take your belt. Use it as a loop, just like you would around your waist. And here we've got it off the ground. Being able to carry firewood <laughs> this is really a pain in the butt if you're trying to bundle it up in your arms. Take it this way and it's secure. Of course, having a bucket to carry that firewood's nice, but if you just have a metal handle and you've got to carry this a long way, that can really wear out your hand. You can either take a belt, wrap it around it, just to give you some cushion, or actually tie the belt to it, strap it on your shoulder, now you can carry it, you got both hands free. Of course, you have a fracture or a broken bone, taking that belt, just using it to hold your arm up, uh, definitely gives you a lot of comfort. The leather makes it nice as well. Improvised tourniquet, you get it above the cut. You gotta get it tight enough. The leather binds on itself, so it gives it some friction and it'll hold itself into place, but you've got to apply the pressure. And if someone gets stuck in a pit or gets stuck down in a hole, you can use this to either give them supplies or to pull them out. If you're up in a high spot, you need to help somebody down, you can use this as a lifeline to reach down, help them pull them up, or tie your belt to it, lower items down. And in a water environment, lake, river, even the ocean, you can use this to lift it out for someone to grab hold of, again, making it a good lifeline. Of course, the belt can be used as an improvised weapon. It has some length, you can really get some swing into this thing, and with this metal buckle, you could definitely do some damage. Uh, a lot better than just bare hands. We were flying right after 9-11, and I remember on the flight, heading to New York City, had a good belt on with a good buckle. And I thought, if nothing else, I'll pull this belt off and I'll choke the crap out of whoever it is that tries to take this plane down. Okay, I'm a little crazy, but that's just what I was thinking. Of course, the back side of this leather can also be used as a strop to keep your knives and tools sharp. Boiling water, preparing food. You know, you don't know what kind of utensil you may have. This one doesn't have an insulation on it. Here I've got open flame. I need to grab that pot. I can do it with the belt, and that'll give it some insulation. Even much better than a shirt. You can see it's a pretty decent little flame coming out of there. This is gonna get really hot. Again, you just don't know what you're gonna need to cook with. This can also give you a better reach. It may be, you know, six, eight inches too far even when I jump. But having a belt like this, you can bring it around the tree. That way I've got a hold of whatever I need to get a hold of. If I need to climb this tree, I can't. Yeah, I'm gonna break my neck, so I think you get the idea. The belt can also be used to pull game, let's say, you. I've shot a deer, you need to pull it out of the woods. Uh, you have a fallen comrade, someone's injured, you can drag them with this, make a litter if you need to. Uh, there are just so many different uses for this belt. Then, once the belt is no longer usable as a belt, you can take these pieces and use the leather for a number of different things. In fact, I saw one thing where they took a tool holder, they just cut off pieces like this and drilled it in and used it to put hammer screws and things like that, just like on a regular tool belt. 
So there are just so many different things you can do with this. And if you've got your old belts, keep them. If you find some old leather belts, it'd be great to be able to do a lot of different things with these very useful items. And guys, if you're looking for a really excellent belt for everyday use, for concealed carry, or for all the things we talked about, DowTechForce.com, I'll have the website down below. Their bull leather belts are the best. And again, I've had this belt for about six years. Uh, you can check my first review on it. In fact, I'll have that linked down below. It's pretty pathetic. Uh, but this is an excellent system. Uh, I've really never worn out one of these belts. I've gotten them pretty rough, but they're just excellent. They've never failed me yet. So the leather belt for survival, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. The belt, the belt, it's been used, the belt, it's been be... Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, now that was a trick in itself, just getting this thing tied. <laughs> Not being too politically correct, but if your children get out of line while you're in bug out, it makes a good disciplinary tool. Tried and true.